What is your own story of rejection and persecution? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. On July 27, 1996, during the Summer Olympic Games in Atlanta, a pipe bomb with nails went off in crowded Centennial Olympic Park where thousands of spectators had gathered for a concert and merrymaking, killing one woman and injuring 111 other people. Shortly before the explosion, Richard Jewell, who was working as a temporary security guard in the area, discovered a suspicious-looking backpack abandoned beneath a park bench. Jewell alerted police to the backpack which held the bomb and moved people out of harm's way before it exploded. Early news reports lauded Jewell as a hero for helping to evacuate the area after he spotted the suspicious package. Three days later, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution revealed that FBI was treating him as a possible suspect, based largely on a lone bomber criminal profile. For the next several weeks, the news media focused aggressively on him as the presumed culprit, labeling him a person of interest. The media, to varying degrees, portrayed Jewel as a failed law enforcement officer who might have planted the bomb so he could find it and be a hero. The New York Times reported in October 1996 when he was cleared as a suspect that a number of law enforcement officials have said privately for months that they thought Mr. Jewell had been involved in the bombing even though there was no evidence against him and some evidence seemed to rule him out. Jewell was never officially charged but the FBI thoroughly and publicly searched his home twice, questioned his associates, investigated his background, and maintained 24-hour surveillance of him. The pressure began to ease only after Jewel's attorneys hired an ex-FBI agent to administer a polygraph which Jewel passed. A Justice Department investigation of the FBI's conduct found the FBI had tried to manipulate Jewel into waiving his constitutional rights by telling him he was taking part in a training film about bomb detection, although the report concluded no intentional violation of Mr. Jewel's civil rights and no criminal misconduct had taken place. Eric Rudolph was arrested in 2003 and pleaded guilty to the Centennial Park bombing and other attacks on an abortion clinic and lesbian nightclub and sentenced to life imprisonment. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus is back in Jerusalem for an unnamed feast. He goes to a pool built around the spring that had been popular with the blind, the lame, and the paralyzed for its medicinal properties. A man paralyzed for 38 years had been attempting to get in the pool, but no one had bothered to help him. Jesus does one better and heals him completely. The man stands up, walks away, and joyfully tells others of the good deed done to him. But the Jews are not happy and they accuse Jesus of violating the Sabbath day restrictions and use this to persecute him. Have you ever done something good and your actions have been wrongly misinterpreted? Or the other way around, have you wrongly branded people and their actions? You may have experienced being either on one or the other side. You can be the accuser or the accused. But surely, when you're the target of persecution, it can be very painful and hurting on your part. You may stop doing the good you do for fear of further being judged. You become paralyzed. Or you may persist in doing good and let the truth come out eventually. Prejudging others and their motivations may either result from basing our perceptions of people on wrong or little information. When we receive information, we need to examine the kind of information we get, the intentions of people giving us the information, and more importantly, our own heart. Sometimes when we have already formed our view of people, we sift through the information we get and just choose those that will affirm our preset conviction of them in our mind. It may also be an offshoot of how others have treated us in the past. We have become hurters because of the hurts we have undergone in our earlier life. It may be a case of the hunted now turned hurting hunter. Conversely, feeling persecuted by others seems unfair and unjust. After all I have done, you say, it is because people don't know us well. They don't know our story, our past. They only know what they see on the surface. Had they only known, they will be more understanding, more kind, more helpful, we lament. Do you want to be well? Jesus asks the man. It is the same question he asks us today. 
hurting and paralyzed from the brick brats thrown at us, or tired of our own treatment of others, Jesus gives us today the opportunity to tell our own story, just like this paralyzed man. Jesus wants us to express our wants and deepest desires. He wants to have a personal relationship with us. He wants to know our story, our fears and worries, our hopes and dreams. As we take our place at the pool with the other invalids, let us pray for Jesus to come along and choose us to tell our own story. For he knows that beyond the facade that others see, there is a jewel in each one of us that emerges and glows under the warmth of his healing love. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I pray for healing for all my hurts, losses, and the turmoils of my heart. I pray for healing as well for others around me who believe themselves incurable and irredeemable. Father, all these I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.